But since you're going over to Spring Bayou, I was going to tell you quick that uh, I'm an amateur archaeologist. I'm famous for finding stone anchors uh, in the area, big stones with holes in them from the fleet of Atlantis. And I found over 2,000 up and down the coast. So if you go over here to Spring Bayou, uh, the indicators are, according to these stone anchors, the giants used to be here because the stone anchors are so big. Mm -hmm. And that would mean that the Atlantean coast was on the west coast of Florida. That would mean that Tarpon Springs, the central river of the west coast of Florida, would be the Arcadian River of Greek mythology, which would make Spring Bayou the spring of rejuvenating life. Oh, right. well, that's interesting. That so was a that, mouthful. <laughs> so that's where you'd want to go to see where Poseidon was creating mankind, if the Greek mythology is correct. And now we found the stone anchors that seem to indicate that the Greek mm. mythology is the most correct of all those mythologies. The yeah. Greek mythology is the most correct? Yeah, I think so. Because we found the stone anchors on the west coast of Florida where Greek mythology said Atlantis would be found somewhere in the far west regions of the world. And then if you go just seven miles north of here where Plato said Atlantis would be if you were near Eden, you go seven miles away, a thousand stadia. And that's Newport Ritchie. So when you're up there, videotape some of the stone anchors right along the road and in there in Gulf Harbors. And you'll see uh, stones with holes in them and you'll be amazed, you know, stone to anchors. realize that they're stone anchors from giant ships that were the size of oil tankers. And each ship would have about you know, 10 or 15 of these giant stones around it. Now, you wouldn't have one of those stones around. Yeah, yeah, you could go over here. Let's go out the front of the store. It's really amazing. There's so many. There's like, since uh, we found so many stone anchors, that would mean that there's almost like four or five hundred ships up and down the coast when a big wave came over the whole state of Florida. So that would have sunk Florida making it look like Atlantis was sinking rather than a big wave was just coming over this way. Over here at the Wachovia building, on the far side of the building, there happens to be an array of about four or five of those stone acres. You can go up and look in the stones and you can see the rope marks leading away from the holes to the size of the stones, oh, the which, rope. Well, yeah. which indicate that they were tied through the holes with ropes from ancient times. Wow, So that's it great. kind of proves the whole theory that Atlantis was over here and that there were titans of Atlantis uh, ruling the area and then Tarpon Springs would be the area where all these goods were brought you know to the ships and loaded aboard the ships and sailed off to all parts of the world. Oh. That's basically why we have indigenous plants, animals, and beings all over the world is it was seeded from a central place where they were doing some kind of genetic operation to to uh, terraform the earth. And these would be the Greek gods, and we've analyzed the Greek gods as being probably aliens from another planet. Very interesting. And yet, very, very interesting. So, and I'm Johann Christian von Sachs. And where you call are you? me John Saxer, and I work here at the bike store. And so, where were you from? Uh, I'm from uh, Wisconsin. I just happened to trip over this place. I was an amateur archaeologist. I have a patent in pyramid energy. I built pyramid beds. And when I came to Tarpon, I noticed there was an anomaly. They have the ceremony down at Spring Bayou that you'll get on the video a little later. You'll see the spring. They have 30,000 people around there. Every year is January 6th for St. John the Baptist uh, Epiphany Day. They throw on the cross. And I thought, well, this is a pretty neat place. Uh, oh, is that where the high school kids the go kids die, die for it? the cross? Yeah. yeah, and I started to think about it. They lost a cross in 1927 or 8, and the stock market crashed right after they lost their cross. Ooh. And so they thought it was a bad omen to right. lose a cross. And then they lost a couple people who were diving from it over, over the years right. in 1975, I think. And then finally, um, I came down here in 92 and I was looking at the situation as an amateur archaeologist. I kept saying there's something weird about this place. And sure enough, if you look at a map from the air, you can see that the whole river system's been dug out. And you've got a picture of Poseidon's upper torso. And his hand is where Spring Bayou is. And then underneath him, he's got Atlas. And across from Atlas, there's Hesperus, his wife. And down behind Atlas, there's this uh, dragon-shaped river. And the word, uh, pit, uh, the word uh, Euphrates 
is an Atlantean word for dragon-shaped river. So uh, uh, Euphrates means dragon-shaped river. It's just that it's over here. It's not over in uh, Iraq or Iran. And where is this dragon-shaped river? It's the Anclot River. It was the Arcadian River of Greek mythology. And according to Greek mythology, they had this place, river carved out in Eden, just like in Judeo-Christian mythology. But in Greek mythology, they had an underground river, River Alpheus, that Poseidon had dug. So if you go up here to uh, Lake Tarpon, there's right. a gate and a coffer dam that stops the water from flowing into an underground river that goes under the streets and under the city and it's, it comes out right here at Spring Bayou. So, so that's the river Alpheus in Greek mythology. And then the Arcadian River is the surface river. And then when Paz de Leon got here looking for the Fountain of Youth, he renamed the river the Anclo River, safe anchorage. Yeah. You're quite the historian. Yeah, I study the stuff. Uh, they don't want to print it though, but you could put it on YouTube. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> for sure. That's right. No kidding. And then, um, ironically, as it turned out, um, I just I was an amateur archaeologist, but it turned out I was also related uh, to the Royal Line of Switzerland. So I was able to see the stone anchors for more than just stones with holes in them because I had some royal lineage in them. Oh, there so I was you... able to identify the stone anchors as the artifacts of the lands. Otherwise, it probably would have passed them by just like everybody else. Oh, no. Well, it's a good thing it didn't. Well, now we know we're eating it. Oh, really? Yeah. And you believe it's right here? It's Tarpon Springs. Go over to Spring Bayou, videotape these stones on the way over there. You just have to stop a couple of side stops. Right. One at Wachovia, look at the stones, and put your hands into the hole and see the stones, then go over and, and you can see the rope marks on them. Yeah. Now, did you go to um, any university or did you learn this all on your own? I went to University of Wisconsin. I even went up there, tried to get them to accept a free stone from me and I would get it delivered to the University of Wisconsin to prove that the stone anchors of Atlantis were down on the west coast of Florida. but. The university professor at that time, <laughs> his name escapes me. It's a good thing. We don't want to. But anyway, <laughs> he didn't want to take it. I don't know why he didn't want to take it, but he. I just wanted uh, the University of Wisconsin students to have a heads up on the fact that Atlantis was on the west coast of Florida because we found the stone air artifacts to prove it. And archaeology is the first science. So if you don't go by the first science, you're not going to be able to do anything. So where do they believe that the um, Atlantis is? All over the Which... world they believe, all different spots, but no spot has found 2,000 one ton and over stone anchors up and down. The okay. So this spot really identifies it in my mind. Oh, okay. Well definitely, I'm glad we ran into you. This was quite the uh, bike ride and little stop here. <laughs> yeah, and then we tell people all the time to either go down over here to Spring Bayou or go down the road here to Wall Springs. There's all sorts of classic history here. There's out on the islands, people have dug for treasure from the pirates of the, you know, old days when they were around here. And then, of course, Ponce de Leon's fort, he was just out at the edge of the river here, just the north side of the river, and he established a little colony here 200 Spaniards that got wiped out by the Indians. So the area is really rich in history. Wow. Good. Um, do you, have you written any papers, oh, like lots authored? Of them, lots of them. I'm on the internet. Uh, yeah, Switzerland's king, uh, that's apostrophe S, uh, Switzerland apostrophe S uh, king. You can find me there. You can also find me... Uh, How do you spell your first name? I'm Johan, J-O-H-A-N-N. -N. And then there's Von, B-O-N, capital S-A-X. Okay. Johan Von Sachs. Okay. And, uh, my dad's still alive, so I'm really just the Prince of Switzerland. <laughs> that's cute. <laughs> oh, that's great. I'm going to end it that way. You're the Prince of Switzerland with a lot of info. Love yeah. it. Enough info to make people realize that this coming from real authority. Yes, and uh, they you may... You don't usually get info from real authority. It, as it turns out, the Prince of Switzerland, the line goes all the way back to David just as all the Royal Lines viewers go back. Wow, I, the, I should come back on this bike ride and get more, more like a second chapter. The Von Sachs name goes all the way back to Isaac, the father of Jacob. It goes back to Isaac, the father, oh, wow. Von Sachs. 
father to son through time. It's awesome. We'll be back. All right. I'll have more questions. Good. Okay, Thanks see you. Thanks for interviewing me. <laughs> Put it on YouTube. Hi, everybody on YouTube. And your name is again? Johan von Sachs. Johan Christian von Sachs. Great. Love it. Bye. Bye.